You're right, you're a little bit jealous that you can't uh, compete on Saturday night uh, with a, an arena with 25, 26,000 fans in there. I'm always a little jealous when there's a good fight happening. I think I'm, you know, like one of those guys that like see something and needs to get involved. But uh, I'll be I'll be happy to be a spectator. It's gonna be a great fight. Uriah, you've you, you've warmed recently. I think in a certain interview you did recently to possibly fighting your teammate um, T.J. Dillashaw. Um, you know, any any change in the mindset in that? Uh, I don't really want to fight T.J. I I think what I said was I wouldn't fight him, but uh, you know, I mean anything. Is possible in this world, but my, my my stance is no. And what's you know what's next for you? Because you've the next step is obviously t- the title again. So you know you know have you any plans? Anything you'd you'd like to do, or you know, a change of a weight class if you're not going to fight TJ? Possibly. I mean, there's a lot of exciting fights out there. So um, first thing I need to worry about is my next fight, and I think that's going to kind of be a de- determining factor on a lot of different things and. And we really have to have a discussion. If, if TJ and I sit down and talk and it's something that we want to do, maybe we will. But um, I, I've had conversations with him. It's, it's kind of strange because he's been, uh, you know, we lived together. I recruited him. We've done, you know, I brought him along the whole, the whole way. And uh, you know, it's, it's, just, it's a different situation. What, to, what was said in that conversation? Can you shed any light into your, what your conversation was actually like? It was, it was not pro fighting each other. I feel like he's gotten a lot better. We're at a different weight class. Uh, I feel like I've gotten better as well. Um, it's a different fight, you know. And this is a sport where anything can happen. Uh, I plan on beating him again. I'd like to get a finish again, but I know that he's, uh, you know, he's he's going to have the same goals for me. So uh, I think the difference is it's a different day, and uh, we're different fighters than we were back then. So um, you know, he's he's been on a big win streak. I've had. A ton of wins as well, and uh, it's it's going to be a great fight. This time it's on his home turf as well. And uh, throughout your long career, you have never fought in Brazil, even though you have a lot of fans and friends in there. What's that going to be like fighting him in Brazil? I can't wait. I freaking love Brazil, man. I've uh, I will probably be on the beach, you know, starving my butt off, looking at acai bowls and whatnot. But uh, I, I love Brazil and. I'm curious to see how that goes. I know that he's got a big fan base over there. I feel like I've got a big fan base in Brazil as well. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that they'll have his back a little bit, but uh, I hope to have some, some cheers in the crowd as well. I've heard you weren't really interested in fighting him, that you were looking at some other opponents. Is that true? And who were you thinking about? I haven't been thinking about anybody, to be honest. I've been thinking about you know all sorts of stuff, and it hasn't been who I'm going to fight next. You know, I usually do as I'm told in this sport um, and somebody just asked if that's a fight that you'd, that you'd want and I was like not necessarily like the fight that I want but I'll take it you know Andy you uh, this uh, this weekend obviously uh, Andy Ogle is fighting against Amir, Z- Amir Zikani but he's actually been out with you guys in Team Alpha Male how did that come about and how did you get on over there well Andy has been uh, you know a, a part of the team from when I coached on the Ultimate Fighter and always had an open invitation. And I think he just decided that he needed to make a change, and, and we welcomed him with open arms. He's a great guy. He works his butt off. He has a positive attitude, and he's got a lot of skill. So I, I would have liked to have him before he had the fights he's had prior, which kind of put him in a, in a, in a bad situation. But uh, I'm looking forward to him doing a great job and, and getting a W. Speaking of training, uh, competing in the UFC and making his debut later on this year, what was your reaction to that whole situation? I like it. You know, I mean, does he deserve to be in the UFC at this moment? Not from his credentials, no. Will he, you know, stand a great chance of winning? Probably not, but uh, depending who they put him against. But who is anybody to tell someone else that they're not the toughest guy on the planet? You know, if you look at any any little kid and you ask him if he's the toughest kid in his, in his class and he says yes and you know who we tell him he's not so if he believes in himself and he's willing to put in the work he's willing to put his his health and his reputation and his pride on the line you know I, I say more power to the guy and, and maybe he'll uh, upset everyone and, and be the next champ what direction do you think you're heading in in a division because you beat a Sun Xiao 
you've knocked off a real potential title con title contender and you know you've done TJ a big favour there without having to go forward and fight him so what direction do you think you're on if you're going to be facing these top contenders but not fighting for the title you know what I don't know I, I got to first knock off Rafael Cinto he's going to be a tough mm, task just like he was the first time um, I still think there's a storyline for him and TJ fighting because he has a win over TJ and I know TJ would like to get that uh, fight as well so um, you know it's not my fault we got all of all, all the top guys in our division, you know, <laughs> we've been building them up. We got, you know, we got a lot of guys in our gym that are tough, and um, you know that's part of the reason why we we have the champion and the contenders and everyone else. But there's like come a day where you feel unfulfilled. I mean, let's say TJ goes on like a run, you know, he's got the title five years from now, and you're starting to get to the end. I mean, do you think, all right, I gotta do it, man. I got I gotta fight it because I want my chance at, at the belt. Um. I guess you just have to understand my mentality. Uh, it's it's not it, like I said. It's nothing I've completely ruled out in my mind. Depending on you know how TJ approaches me, etc. But it's not like I'm not that guy, dude. I don't really, unfortunately, you know that's that's a material thing to me. I know where I stand in my mind. You know, I think I'm the baddest dude on the planet. I always have, so uh, I'll, I can live with that. It's more in TJ's mind that that he doesn't want to fight you or because you said you're a little bit more open to the idea i'm saying i told tj this a long time ago the only way i'm fighting him is if he was like dude this is a big opportunity we should do this it's going to put a lot of money in our pocket and like we have that discussion together if he comes to me and asks me to fight him i'll be like all right dude but i mean that's that uh, you know it's a weird situation like i said could you go full speed like i know because the argument against it is a lot of people say like that wouldn't even be a real fight before before you it? go on TJ is the most competitive person on the planet, and we can't get him to slow down in practice. So just for sake of not uh, hurting myself, I would definitely be going 100%. <laughs> Speaking of uh, training partners, my friend Jonathan Svensson has been spending some time over with you at Team Alpha Male. I also heard that he was staying at your house. Uh, yeah. So what's your impression of him as a fighter and of the overall uh, now being here in Sweden of the uh, MMA scene here in Sweden? You know, Jonathan, would you call him Jonathan? Jonathan. Jonathan. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a very tough fighter, man. He, he's a guy that doesn't give up. He's, he keeps finding a way to get back out to the camp, even though he's like going and working for a while and, and saving up money and getting injured and fighting every weekend. And uh, He's, he's going to have a, a great future in the sport, so I'm right. excited for him. Last weekend, uh, the AFC and the NFC Championship game took place in the States, and obviously your boss is a Dana White, the massive Patriots fan, but who are you picking in the Super Bowl, the Seahawks or the Patriots? Believe it or not, football is my first passion in life. I, I've been a huge football fan ever since I was a little kid, but I haven't watched it since I think I lost my virginity. <laughs> so, how long um, ago was that? It's a long time ago. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I've had you know the task at hand. I don't even know who's in the Super Bowl right now, to be honest. Seahawks and Patriots. Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm, I'm going to say Niners next year. I like Conor McGregor. I think he's a, he's a talented fighter. He's very good at promoting himself, but I don't think it's fake. I think that's his real personality. The guy, uh, he's probably been, you know, in elementary school yapping off to everyone and probably got beat up a little bit more back then than he does now. But, uh, you know, I, I think he's an exciting fighter. I think Jose Aldo is the best fighter in the world, uh, pound for pound. He's beat guys like Frankie Edgar, Chad Mendez, myself. Uh, he's, he's beat... You know some of the best guys in the game, and I don't think that Connor's not in his league. I just think that Aldo's the better fighter, and I also think that they are. I don't think they're coddling Connor by any means, but they're definitely keeping away from guys like Frankie Edgar, Dennis Bermudez, and Chad Mendez for now because it makes sense for him to have his best chance against another striker to possibly get the belt because he's a promotional, uh, you know, piece of gold. Guys, uh. You know, he's a whole pot of gold. Is there any Irish uh, Muhammad Ali? I don't know about that. I mean, Muhammad Ali was a very, you know, influential person for a lot of the reasons just from being a great fighter. And right now, uh, Conor McGregor has, you know, he can speak well and he and he and he dresses like Pee Wee Herman. But, um, you know, it's it's not because of his. Uh, it's not because of anything that he's done that, that he's getting notoriety. Muhammad Ali was a very influential person. So, Does, does, does your Faber fight for a title in 2015? Uh, 
you know what? I feel like I'm always fighting for a title, man. I like to see the statistics of my fights that have been title fights, and you got to consider, you know, we didn't have pride in the UFC for my weight class when I first started. I was fighting in the Gladiator Challenge and the King of the Cage and TKO and the WC against the top fighters in the world. So most of my fights have been title fights. So I would say... Uh, Have we seen another one this year? Probably. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> thanks, you're right. You're right. You're right. I'm going to grab you and take you. We have to give you one more thing. Cheers, man. Nice one. Thanks, bro. Yeah. Nice one. Look after yourself.